This video will be about the what I'm going to call the tech support triage first stage or stage zero of being able to analyze a problem. I'm going to be describing it and I'm going to be bringing up some rather odd examples of this. I'm a tech support person, you're calling me. I don't know what piece of equipment you have or whatever and I'm going to ask you some basic questions. What year does the piece of equipment we're talking about, let's say it's a computer, what year does it say on the box or on the side of it that it was made? What company made it? What model is it? It's a 2001 black tie Macintosh uh, 4, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. And are you claiming that it's having problems? It was hacked. It was hackable because reasons. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to ask you details as to what happened. Well, why don't you take my word for it? Because I'm trying to solve a problem, not listen to you create a conspiracy theory. Okay, instead of it being a black tie Macintosh from 2001, let's make it an aircraft that someone claimed was hacked into and forced to crash into buildings. Again, make model and year of the airplane. The specific one, not just generally what kind it is. Oh, well, I don't have to provide that. Then I can't help you. Have a good day. You have to provide me with stage zero, the information needed to find out if your statement about it having a problem with a black screen or a blue screen, depending on whether it's Mac or PC, or your claim that your car is driving itself off a cliff or the plane ran into a building. You have to give me the information. People who make a claim that planes ran were, were hijacked electronically on 9-11 or that a car was hijacked so that Michael Hastings went off the road. They have to tell you the basics. What year was that particular example of that car made? What make and model is it? And instead of color, is there any specific revisions? Uh, was there add-ons done after the fact? You know, did, 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 did you install Norton on your Macintosh is the joke we would do. The, the problem, if you're not aware of it, the black tie Macintosh of the year 2001 issuing had a problem where if you loaded Macintosh version of Norton's, as they called it, they wouldn't call it Norton's Utilities, it's Norton's, um, it had a problem. It wasn't compatible. <clears throat> and it always came with it. Or people would go out and buy it. It was just the default. So now here we go with cars. Or planes. You have to be specific in your claim. You can't just say, well, you have to prove me wrong. No. You're claiming there's a problem with the device that was easily hackable and that people could hijack planes or hijack cars and cause Tiger Woods to go off the road in his SUV. If you're going to make this claim in a YouTube video, you have to know Tiger Woods was in a Genesis GV80 sport utility vehicle, SUV. He was 40 miles an hour over the limit for the speed around that curve. And if you want to, if you really want to do the experiment, you can exceed speed on our curve and see how often you go off the road in a frickin' top-heavy SUV, which has rollovers all the damn time. Michael Hastings was in a Mercedes C250 Coupe. He was running at what other people claimed was maximum speed, and it was fishtailing. What does fishtailing in a car mean? You might want to look up what that's indicative of. And then there's the Mini Clubman. It's a Mini produced by BMW. It was produced after 2004 and up to 2012 as well as the model changes. But it could be a different year. It could be a 2017 model. It's identical to the 2012 or whatever. But you have to state what year it came out. That way we can look up revisions and changes and fixes that may have been applied. If there was a recall, that sort of thing. So you have to give the make, model, and year for me to take you seriously. If someone's claiming, I have extraordinary information, but I don't have to provide extraordinary proof, or the basics, I mean, we're talking stage zero, okay? So, <clears throat> you have to explain that there's proof it was hacked. This is a BMW Cooper Mini Clubman, okay? You have to look up an example somewhere on the net of someone at least making a claim that they hacked it. They broke into it. Somehow. Okay. What were they able to change, alter, or manipulate in the freaking vehicle? 
If you claim that a 747 can be broken into by sending a radio signal, what radio signal? What frequency? What protocol was used? What was the wattage of the transmitter? Did it use bidirectional communication or just aim a signal at it to do it? What was the outcome? Oh, well, I don't want to do all those details. Then you're lying or repeating a lie. This is not acceptable. And that's the same level of demand for information that must be achieved if we're talking about a 2001 black tie Macintosh, or if that even existed. You can look up the black tie Macintosh. I'll, I'll put a link. I'm not putting it on the screen. I don't care if I'm accurate here. It's a dumb example. But you can go critique it. You can go find out whether or not Norton's was a problem. You can determine whether or not I'm full of it by using a shit example like that. By the way, I really didn't look it up. I mean, this is from memory from literally the year 2001 when the black tie Macintosh might have had that problem. Or it might have been a different one. I don't remember. The point is, you can go double check it and see if I'm completely wrong about it. But when someone says, oh, all airplanes had this ability, or any airplane can be hacked, and then they don't explain even a single example... Or they don't know what year the specific one that hit one of the Twin Towers came out when it was made. That information's public record. You can go look it up. They won't bring it up. That immediately, I mean, we're talking level zero where I will listen to you. They're out. And virtually every conspiracy theorist does that. It's a meme. It's a trope in a movie or a book. And that's why I don't listen to this stuff. So anyway, there was a wreck X number of days ago, or less than two weeks ago. A lady died, and <clears throat> um, she drove her vehicle erratically at maximum speed. And all of these all of these accidents happened because someone was exceeding the speed limit for the environment, for the situation, for the you know for the weather, whatever. Almost every accident, almost every crash where someone says it's suspicious has an obvious cause: speed. In her case, she had run into several things almost hit a person, and the claim is her car was hacked. Now, in the case of Michael Hastings and also the Mini Clubman, the driver of the vehicle might have hit something that was simply on the road that bumped into something and stuck the accelerator. That's a legitimate complaint. That's a legitimate discussion. It should also be pointed out that in the case of the Clubman, it was making a high-pitched noise, which indicated that something in the engine was damaged. Some idler pulley or or a fan belt, or whatever, some piece of equipment was grinding and making the high-pitched noise. It was very consistent, even though the speed of the vehicle would, by nature, change as it's rolling wrong. I want to point out that if you want to claim it was remote accessed and hacked and being steered, that means you'd have to have no delay between you telling the steering wheel to tilt a little and it doing it. And also, you'd have to be able to see what the driver sees so you could drive it. And also, you can't do that because if you made it some automated system, it would have to compensate for predicting what the road conditions are like ahead of it. That means you'd have to start off with basically having all the shit built into it, like a Tesla, for you to claim it was hacked remotely by a radio signal. The Mini Clubman did not have those features. It was not built with an autopilot or a self-parking feature or any of that. A self-parking feature you could hack and it would still be very difficult to remote. And that's the example people point out on YouTube videos. Well, here it shows a car being hacked. Yeah, a car that came with basically the hacking kit built in. That's a little bit different than a car that may not have had power steering, or may not have, well, probably did, but let's say it didn't. Or in this case, an automatic transmission. Without an automatic transmission, it's going to have to do a lot more. That's, you can, again, there's, there's a movie, that, one of the Terminator movies shows the, the female robot controlling a stick shift in a car. That isn't able to happen. You get that, right? And again, it breaks down to the same example. Black tie Macintosh mode. Is there a computer involved? Yes. Then it's the same rules for every computer. You aren't allowed to skip anything because you want your meme. So let's move on. <clears throat> Did the vehicle have any of the following? A cruise control. Something that was a smart function for the braking function. A lot of cars do. Or acceleration. Did it have a transmission that was manual, which would negate the ability to really do most of this? Did it have an automatic transmission? Okay, that has a computer, right? Yeah, a hydraulic computer. Hydraulic computers aren't the same. They don't respond to radio signals. Look up hydraulic computer. Well, it didn't have that kind of transmission, but you'll have to look it up, won't you? Did it have auto park function or other steering feature, like a smart steering feature or something like that? Something to compensate for something. 
did it have a software updating, firmware updating feature? Did it have modes you could edit, flags you could set and reset, registers you could rewrite, anything like that? Did it have settings that you could trim so you could maybe manipulate that to adjust how it aimed? The, the power steering system is a little bit manipulatable. Okay, how? Did it have data and command paths that were separated by being in different cables or different sections of the same cable? Or was it on the same cable, which is a bad idea, maybe. What operating system, if any, did it use? Was it Qunix? Was it uh, some version of Linux? Um, now, the reason I'm bringing all this up is pretty straightforward. Um, you have to have somebody who's making an assertion that that particular car, owned by that particular person, not just cars like it or cars made that year, that particular car had some of these features. I mean, there's a, a plethora of things you could exploit, but, I mean, let's say the braking system. If you wanted to start a wreck or a, a bunch of wrecks on a highway, having a car that suddenly applies the brakes but doesn't put up the red lights would cause wrecks. You could also have it turn on the red lights and not apply the brakes and freak people out and cause wrecks. But that really wouldn't crash the car most of the time. If you could make it apply brakes to only one wheel, that may actually do it. If the vehicle has the ability to be put in a mode where it can do that, a test mode, a diagnostic mode, if someone doesn't explain to you all of these details, that's a short list. They're lying to you by omission because they're not telling you how to keep this from happening to you. Well, I, we don't care about that. We just want our conspiracy theory meme. Then, then you're not doing anything productive and I don't have to take you seriously. Now, some of you out there have, have seen these tropes in movies and TV shows and you're kind of dumbed down about it. Everybody is. It's fun stuff in the movies and stuff. But it does mean that you're willing to accept somebody just waving their hand, a hand wave. Oh, it was uh, accessing the, the controller area network bus, CAN bus, or the electronic control unit, ECU, or onboard diagnostics, OBD. <clears throat> One of them was listed in a comment as OBD-11. It's actually OBD-2 using Roman numerals, OBD-II. And that's a 16-pin I.O. port that's a plug. You could plug a dongle in it with radio frequency abilities, I suppose. But it's a diagnostic port. That doesn't mean necessarily you can reset or set any settings. And again, you have to explain exactly what was done to hack this before any of this happened. Not just assume that it was possible or probable. Or make the blanket assumption that any computer in any car can be hacked. Some of them are not able to be hacked at all because they don't have the ability to work that way because they're not computers in the traditional sense, like you think. They're state machines. They don't have the ability to even be reprogrammed. They have to be pulled out and replaced entirely. So now we've gone from uh, someone's using their cell phone to make a plane, make a, make a train derail somehow. That's in a movie. Or one movie where it said he used a cell phone to control the hammer. An inanimate object suddenly flies at someone's face. Really schlocky. Did it have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular connection, satellite connection, even if it's just receiving, because then it could receive commands? A key fob. Or did it have a wired hookup, connector, test port, or dongle? <clears throat> After hackers prove it was insecure, because you have to find an incident before the case happened of somebody showing that it was hackable, did disclosure of that cause a recall? A patch, a fix. Maybe it wasn't applied to your car you're talking about, or a plane. Companies that make cars do recalls to save face and money. They don't sue it to save lives. Did it happen? Look up the 2014 Jeep Cherokee example. DEFCON Mini Cooper hack, not the same thing as the Clubman. And um, note that most instances where people are insisting that it was somehow a hacking incident are just examples of people driving the vehicle way too fast for the environment and getting in a wreck, which is what you would expect. And people will then invoke things that have nothing to do with the subject matter, which I'm not going to do here. Again, unless a source is making a claim that includes as much data as I, I've, I've requested here, they're not making a claim that's worth paying attention to. People will do it anyway because of search engine optimization and fantastical stories. Just like a movie where somebody somehow uses a cell phone to hack a hammer, this is not required to make sense for people who are interested in the fandom or are fans of the subject matter. 
But if you're making a claim a computer is hacked, prove it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.